what is one thing you wish was taught in school? CJ, we're going to start out with you. Financial management, uh, understanding the credit system in America, right? Understanding how to manage your money properly uh, and how to have a savings account. What is a bond? How do stocks function? How do they work? Like the things that matter. Um, I, th I think our education system, especially early on K through like K through 12, man, it's, it's, it's just sad and unfortunate. Um, you know, like when I, I grew up we had a class called home ec, uh, that at least kind of gave you some basics about how things function and worked at home around the house and, and what that meant. But the, the fact that we teach people algebra and chemistry and all these different things, we try to we try to build them up through this the, the, this terrible system, by the way, quite frankly. But this system of hey, one day you're going to be able to go get a good job like RJ, right? The reality of the matter is this: what what does it matter to have a great job and, and get a good salary if you can't manage the money? Uh, if nobody ever had that conversation with you, we brag and we talk about uh, these athletes that go broke. It's like this: like people get excited when somebody goes bankrupt. People get excited when somebody loses it all, and this, that, and the third. And what if they just never were taught? Nobody ever took the time to even teach them. What if they didn't even know that they could get a bookkeeper to do X, Y, Z? What if they didn't know how to do proper account? Like these things matter and we don't teach it. We don't discuss it enough. And I think it sucks. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, next on tap, we got Steve. What's your, what's your one thing that you wish they taught in schools? Unfortunately, I agree with uh, CJ. No, I think <clears throat> money, I think, is uh, one of the most important things to understand. And if you look at everyone that's wealthy and everyone that's not, the difference is not how much active income they've had. It has entirely to do with one understands money better than the other person. That's all it comes down to, right? Right now, we've been printing all this money, and it's been great. We get to go shopping. We get to go spending, right? But if you look at pre-2020, where the money was at, in the, in, the, in the world, and you look at it, I guarantee you in 2024 and 2025, you look where the money's going to be at, it's going to be the exact same people by the same ratios, right? And the reason why is that one side understands money better than the other. So uh, right now, it's not taught in schools. So it's being basically taught by our parents. And, you know, for better or worse, we were just talking about diversity, right? Different cultures value money differently. Um, you know, there's that whole stand-up bit, right, about how Chinese people love money. It's true. We love money. Right? We have a God of money, right? So we talk about money. We have healthy conversations in the household about money, about savings, all this, right? So there's a reason why some cultures do better financially than others, and it's because it's taught from the parents. But I believe it would be awesome if it was taught in schools and everyone had access to that information. I'm hearing a lot, a lot for... I'm, I'm hearing a lot for financial literacy here. I like it. I like it. All right, RJ, uh, talk to uh, talk to us. What what are you thinking over here? Yeah, so I'm going to give somewhat of a controversial answer because I'm the the guy that put his his son in school for a year and a half and yanked them out, um, and and we homeschool now. I mean, history has changed somehow since I went to school. Math has changed somehow since I went to school. I don't know that I want schools teaching financial literacy because quite frankly, I don't know that they can teach it. I, I, so to answer this, I, I guess my gut feeling and controversy to answer would be, I wish there was less schooling um, where to Steve's point, the parents could actually teach their kids, not some very underpaid, um, probably uneducated person themselves teach my kid how to do something. Because to be quite frank, I don't want one other person out there, especially a school teacher teaching my son their version of financial literacy because it's just not going to happen. And so that's my controversial answer is I wish there was less schooling. Got it. Got it. Not, not that controversial, actually. I mean, you know, start at home. That, that's where, that's where it belongs. 
All right, Leon, bring us home. What are your thoughts? There's definitely a theme that has developed. We've had a little bit of this conversation on past shows, and financial literacy is the correct answer. And to RJ's point, I do think that when it comes to financial literacy, specialists uh, should be the ones that are teaching this or at least writing the curriculum, right? So it can't, it, you can always have teachers teach when the curriculum is done by the people that are doing the thing, whether that's banking, whether that's real estate, stocks, what have you, right? We are taught how to bake pies. We're taught how to make birdhouses and shop but no one is taught necessarily the financial literacy. As a kid growing up super poor, I used to always want to know what was the magic, the, the secret sauce. And what I found in my life experiences is a phrase that I've come up with, which is spenders gonna spend. People that spend money are always going to be spend, uh, going to spend their money as soon as they get it because they haven't had that foundational financial literacy. But I do agree with RJ, it has, the curriculum has to be written by the people that are actually professionals in that particular industry. So um, to touch on RJ's point, if you wanna teach at home, I don't think we're saying you can't teach at home, right? We're not saying it's mutually exclusive. What Chris and I are arguing about is increasing the baseline, right? Right now there's zero. Um, now I totally agree with you. Why has math changed? I don't know. It's been pretty good for thousands of years, right? Um, why, why, why is the curriculum changing? I don't know. Uh, but I don't think it's mutually exclusive, right? You can teach your kid differently than, uh, than, than what they're learning in school. I am, I'm not really active, but I'm somewhat active in my kid's education. You know, we look at the homework sometimes. Uh, I went to a parent-teacher conference. And I actually asked them, hey, can I just look at what you're teaching my kids? You know, and we went through to review what they're teaching my kids. Um, but I don't think it's mutually exclusive. I just think as far as, uh, what we want to offer, I think is increasing the baseline. And then the part where you're saying, you don't know if it could be done, RJ, the question says wish. So your A in finance and in, in literacy has taken a step. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a C now. Let, let me C. ask you, do you really think that kids from five to 10 years old need to be sitting in classrooms for eight hours being taught the things that they're being taught and not getting the real life. Like, for example, my kids, they get experiences that uh, a kid that attends school can never get because of what we've done with our school systems. And that's what I'm saying is, is if there's less schooling and, and we took them out. I, I don't want financial literacy taught to the kids through a schooling system. Now, to Leon's point, if it was done by a specialist later on, it's very similar to, you know, what we do with teaching real estate, right? We're, we're specialists in what we do. That's different. But I don't think you're ever going to get something like that in a grade school. But you, yeah, you I don't know, think fifth and sixth grade is the time where we're going to be teaching this to them, right? We're just saying teach it at some point in school. It cannot be in fifth or, or, or five years old or six years old. Yeah, you, you and Leon are speaking from your perspective from financial privilege, right? Not everybody has a household where they can say, hey, I'm going to homeschool my kids. Some people got to go to work. Some people are in single parent households and there's no stay at home with your kid type shit going on, bro. And so at yep. the end of the day, while I, I, I hear you, what you're saying isn't going to land, all right, in my world and the people that I know's world, because at the end of the day, the majority of America, RJ, Leon, the, Leon, where you come from, People are highly relying on the public school system to serve Absolutely. their children and educate their children. They don't have the financial privilege that we have to be able to pull their kids out of a school and homeschool them, right? My daughter is at home taking in school right this second. I get it. I get it. I got financial privilege too. Don't be mistaken. But I, it's not lost on me that I didn't have it before, and there's tons of people who don't have that. And so I agree, I agree 100%, CJ. And I wasn't trying to say that uh, it's something that we pull them out of. I was saying that from a perspective of the teacher that is teaching that, because I do believe that it should be taught in school. I would prefer that the curriculum be written by those that are successful for those particular things. And that's not asking the education system to do something way outside of the box, although probably is a uh, shout out. 
a shout out to Larry Yatch, who has been a real estate disruptor, sells, uh, he's a, uh, a leadership coach on real estate disruptors. He's talked about many a times the education system that we currently was built like factory workers, right? It built, uh, you know, the system was built for factory workers, not necessarily independent thinking. So That's if, yeah. you know, there's, there, there's definitely something that, um, and I, this is not, I don't want to blanket this because there are schools, there are public schools, there are teachers that are doing this, that are working with, uh, private with, 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 uh, dads and moms that do these things to bring them into school. So it, it does happen, but across the board, financial literacy is something that needs to be taught at the public school system. Yeah. Because CJ. the conversation really is. When 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 do we make adjustments and change and reform the education system for public institutions? That's the problem. Teacher pay is the problem. The things that we are teaching the children in school is the problem. I'm not going to touch on some of those hot button topics today. We'll say that for another show. All right. But RJ, go ahead. What are you about to say, man? My my point is Nicole Allen said it best right here in the comments. Her six-year-old is much more advanced than she ever was being homeschooled three days a week for four hours a day. It's not what is being taught. It's how it's being taught and who it's being taught by. My point is, is why can kids become more advanced being taught by their parent who is not a trained teacher for four hours a day for three days a week? Do you want to know why? Is- Do you want to know why? Because yeah. they're being, to Steve's point earlier, bro. They're being trained at home by a parent who's been able to achieve financial success in some capacity. And one parent is able to stay at home or one parent or the parent is able to hire somebody in house to tutor their kid and teach their kid in home. And so somebody had to have some sort of financial success as you have to be able to afford that. But that's, that's not normal. We don't know that. I don't know who Nicole Allen is. Well, disclosure. (laughs) Disclosure. Full disclosure, Listen, Nicole serious. Allen is affiliated with Matthew Potter. So. That's my wife, y'all. <laughs> right. So she again, wow. but she's got financial privilege, I'm sure. Look, look, well, she made honest. all the money for the family. Right. You you're trying to tell me that you think people across America are homeschooling their kids today and, and they make regular income? That's what you but think. Then, but you but you're missing the point. It just our my point is is that why can they be more advanced with less schooling by a parent who is not a trained teacher than double the workload by trained teachers. That is my point. Is that because gener- generationally, wrong. to Steve's point, generationally they've been taught at a higher level of education based on their culture at home, so they have an increased education level that's being able to be passed down generation to generation. And if there's one well, thing I we learned, high- RJ, if there's one thing we learned during COVID. Is that most parents do not want to homeschool their kids? Listen, I got Damn a high straight. school diploma, bro. What what higher level of education do I have? I'm, listen, I dropped out of college. I barely graduated high school, but I bet you I got more financial literacy than a lot of people. That just just because you 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 failed out of high school or just a high school graduate got a GED, <laughs> whatever, bro. It doesn't mean that you can't become financially literate. You can't. You, you're telling me that you haven't self-taught yourself things? Yes. You haven't gone out to consume information? RJ, would it shock you to know that a lot of people in this country don't have an available bus line to even get to a library to be able to get to a computer or get to a book? Well, no. I, I Listen, I'm not going to argue about that but because that I feel like we're getting way off the topic here. It's, I mean, no, it is the topic. It's access to information. And, and the majority of people don't have the financial privilege that we do. They can't provide private schooling. They can't provide in-home tutoring. They can't send their kids to Mathnasium and Commando and all these different places. Bro, my my my, my daughter goes to, to Mathnasium. It's three hundred ninety-nine dollars a month. That's not normal. People this people just can't pay that. And so the yeah, education and, and to, comes from the school systems. And to your to your point, RJ, I get where you're going with that. You know, if you're in a public setting versus a private setting, obviously you expect to get a better education from a private setting no different than if you go to jail and all of a sudden you've got a public defender defending you versus someone that has some privilege and opportunity to pay more for a better attorney it's it's what we're what we've always argued on this show is that the more private the better the service will be 
And unfortunately, there's just over time, education system hasn't developed. And this is the one thing that we feel like is missing the most. This is right, what man. I'm talking about, Take right? Got to move on. This is what I. Yeah. Okay, all right. Last thing I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say about our school systems. 14% of the people voted for Chris <laughs> Second answer, and 35% voted for Chris Jefferson's first answer. <laughs> Buzz. <laughs> Hey, listen, man. It pays to All be right. at the U, man. It pays to be at the U. The edu- <laughs> listen, listen, RJ, let me help. Let me help. Let me help. The All education right. system at the U is different, man. It's All different. Right. So, right? It's different. 